firstly checking for admissions tests for Oxford that are tests in the majority of subjects and you do need to sort this out and be registered for, like, through your school exams office and sit it like a normal exam but it's a, a bit of a sort of extra process there. Is there a date for that one? Yes, it'll be the same deadline as the UCAS deadline. They have to have done the test before? They have to have registered for it. Oh, registered. Um, so they all then sit, for the Oxford ones anyway, sit them on the same date which is the 4th of November this year and it's usually the sort of 4th or 5th um, each year for that so it's kind of relatively regimented in, in that sense, but it's a bit confusing <laughs> for students who just don't know that it exists and that they have to do it. Um, what else is there? And again, for written work, that can be a bit of a, a flummox. Um, it's simply like something they've done in the course of their work, so an essay, but it does need to have been marked. Um, so ideally, <coughs> if a student is perhaps thinking about applying, this could be something that they're thinking out about for their thing. We're not expecting them to do anything especially for it, but if, for instance, they're not really writing that kind of essay, then, there's object, then they're going to need to, and they can do that. Um, EPQ, anybody doing EPQs? This was, yeah. um, they're not going to form any kind of formal part of assessment for us. Um, what they are useful for is for students to develop their skills and to kind of explore their subjects. It's one way of kind of doing those super curricular activities because they're able to look into things, do some research independently as well. Um, so. Obviously, again, it's one of those things that students may or may not have the opportunity to do. It's not really necessarily a choice, so we won't assess anyone based on it. But it's, it's a useful thing if they have that opportunity. Um, and while they're a bit too long to use as written work to submit, you can submit a sort of section of it. Usually, written work's about 2,000 words, um, so that could be a possibility. Okay, so for references, um, these are the predicted grades. Basically, as long as someone is meeting or exceeding a standard offer, that subject, um, then they're a viable applicant. So it isn't like you're supposed to check at the point what that standard offer is. Um, that can be irrespective of what they got to AS, but some explanation might be helpful. Um, actually, kind of evidencing that is going to be more useful for us to say, okay, this is the best student I've ever had, <laughs> or actually they're able to do this skill, which is very high level, or this is the sort of top student in the year. That kind of thing is really going to help with that. Um, in terms of kind of contextual information. We will have some information through UCAS on the school performance. Um, so we tend to get a sort of score on average GCSEs, average A-levels, um, things like that. And also there's a kind of postcode flag that we get. So quite a lot of connected information is sent to us automatically. Um, but things that you can add into that within the reference are sort of relative rankings of the best person you've had. Is there anything that's happened during the course of their education in the school that might have affected things? So if you had you know, staff absent um, or whatever. That's useful for us to know um, if there are any extenuating circumstances. So there's a slight difference between universities in terms of how they deal with extenuating circumstances. Um, we don't have an extenuating circumstances form, um, but some universities do. What I suggest is anything like that, at least make some reference to it within the reference. Um, maybe that you can't kind of provide the details or that the student doesn't want the details provided within that. Um, but that makes it easier as, a, as the overall process if everything is in the UCAS form. There's a section on the UCAS form, isn't there, where you can enter some specific details about things that you want admission students to know, but okay. not for students to be aware of. Is it worth putting it in reference as well, or is it okay just in that specific section? Um, either is fine. I think, I mean, if it's a situation of accelerating circumstances, usually the student will have instigators of knowing about it, perhaps or want us to know about it, mm -hmm. in which case it's fine to go in the reference. Mm -hmm. Students can request to see the reference. Um, so I wouldn't put anything in there that you didn't want them to see. Um, which is why there is that section, um, but it ends up to you really, but in terms of what we see, the reference is going to be a chunk of information that comes to us that we're definitely going to be looking at, obviously we look at everything else as well, um, but things within the UCAS form, it's so much simpler, um, it makes it, you know, it's not going to go unnoticed, um, and yeah, getting into sort of other issues, it's good for us to know, it's fine if you know, there are things that need to be sent on later, usually the things that are kind of additions to the form are things that have happened after the application has been made. Um, but we do sometimes get them on doctor's letters, things like that. That do come separately as well. Okay, yeah. So some of the, the trickier ones. Um, it's an issue for both sort of personal statements and references um, where students are applying for perhaps slightly different courses at different universities or applying for joint courses, it's a particular issue for Oxford. Um, so it's kind of quite useful to have addressed both. It can be tricky, um, but maybe kind of looking more at general skills, transferable skills that might be relevant to it. Um, and again, the sort of order in the reference as to which subjects are, are speaking. 
um, in terms of actually contextualising sort of how, how good a student is, and this is, is quite useful for saying you know, how they rank compared to other students in that year, other students you've taught, um, thinking about something that demonstrates that level of skill, um, and, and using that in the references is really useful for us to see. Again, we're not going to sort of be judging a student if, if the reference isn't written like this, um, that wouldn't go against the student, but it makes it much more information rich for us. Um, so we're going to have a look at some uh, a reference. Um, so after the nothing to do bit, we have a reference sheet, um, and I've just got a summary of all the points that we've been talking about. But on the other side of it is an example of, of a reference. This is from one of our students at Christchurch, um, who is a history student. So I'd like to have a read, see what you think. I put the selection criteria for history at the bottom, um, so see if you think they've been met. I've got them there. Um, What's good about it? What could be improved about it? Is it similar to what you do when you write references? Um, is the structural and the style suitable? And whether they've actually kind of done a good job? So have a look and see what you think. What do you think? In terms of content or style? Anything. <laughs> um, I 
Um, whenever I've written references or advised on writing references, um, one of the first things that I would have said is to order the subjects yeah. in order of <laughs> preference or how relative they are to the degree. Yeah, so it's quite unusual. <laughs> yeah, so when I first started reading this, I thought that perhaps she's um, she wanted to study English or literature or classics or something like that. And it wasn't until I got into the second paragraph that yeah. I realised history, at which point I thought, surely they're going to be around. Yeah, it was a bit weird. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, yeah, this is not a perfect reference. <laughs> Why I picked it. Um, anything that's good about it? She does seem to be able to hit the selection criteria. It's just sort of not obvious on your first reading. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you go back through, it is there, but it's not. So I don't think the people writing it have, have necessarily read them. Yeah. <laughs> I think they sort of ha- happen to have sort of stumbled upon them yes. <laughs> as things that, and they are actually demonstrated quite well, but it doesn't look like they've been sort of strategically used. Yeah. It's not even clear that she did English and French, is it? It's just no, it, it's kind of... Just, it. Yeah, it's sort of, hmm, languages oh, oh, thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is this how you would sort of... Do you have kind of it subject by subject yes. in your schools? Yeah. And are they individually written by subject teachers? Yes. Yeah. Well, we, we sort of um, cut and paste job. Yeah. The tutors, um, personal tutors, get the references in the subject teachers, and then the personal tutor puts it all together. Yeah. No, that's quite. That's a. Petty.